welcome to my channel. So happy to have you here. I just finished making this super cute baby blanket. I'm gonna walk you through it, so stay tuned. I started off by going to my favorite store, Joann's. They have so much good stuff. If you know, you know. They have so much selection. Sometimes it's overwhelming, but it's good to go in with the plan. This is it. My niece, her name is Sunny. I wanted to make a blanket that reflected her name, so that's why I went with all yellow. You're gonna need three quarters of a yard of minky and one pack of satin binding. Make sure to wash your fabric before you start sewing. Sometimes in the wash it can shrink or, you know, just change. So it's best to get that done before you cut and sew. I am making sure that my fabric is folded evenly, lining up the corners. And I am going to cut along that fold, trying to get it as even and straight as possible. The next step is to measure our fabric. We are wanting a 27 inch by 27 inch square. So I'm just measuring and realizing I need to cut a few inches off one of the sides. I am using a rotary cutter. This is, in my opinion, the best way to get a straight edge cut really crisp and nice. If you don't have one, that's totally okay. You can just use scissors. Um, you'll just have to be a little bit extra careful. Make sure that you are really careful with the rotary cutter. It's very sharp. I am checking my lengths again, making sure that it is how I want it. Again, 27 inches by 27 inches. Next, you want to just go ahead and pin your pieces together. You do want wrong sides together. So the minky facing out on the front and the back. Use as many or as few pins as you need. I used a good amount of pins just to make sure that it wasn't gonna be slipping around all over the place. You can go ahead and start sewing at this point. You do wanna go ahead and sew all four sides of your fabric. Just use a normal half inch seam allowance or honestly, whatever <laughs> works. Your binding is pretty thick, so anything you do will probably be okay. Do make sure that you pivot on all the four corners. To do that, go to about a half inch from the edge of the fabric, leave your needle in, pull your foot up, turn, put it back down, and then you can go ahead and keep going. Try to make sure that you're taking your pins out as you go. That way you don't accidentally run one over and break your needle. Trust me, I've done it. It's not fun. Here I am pulling out my binding. I'm so excited. This is the part where things start coming together. Uh, as I pull it out, I'm realizing that it's a little bit brighter than I was hoping. It doesn't really match the fabric. I'm kind of like sitting there thinking, um, can I make this work? Maybe, maybe it will look okay. <clears throat> yep, nope, it looks bad. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if you think it would have been okay. I ended up going to Joann's right in the middle of everything and picking a pink binding instead. Before you attach your binding to your blanket, I usually like to fold both of the corners in so that way it sits kind of at a diagonal which makes the binding less bulky when, when you go to sew it. You can see there that my binding is kind of at a diagonal. 
So once you do go to attach it, you want to bring the edge of the fabric into the fold of the binding. Get it in there as snug as you can without making it bulky and chunk up or anything like that. So bring it in super snug. You do want to use a lot of pins or clips or whatever you use for attaching binding. I usually just use pins and that works fine for me. When binding something with corners like we are here, I always think it looks best to do a mitered corner. A mitered corner is basically when you have an angle or a seam at a 45 degree angle. So, you know, right there smack dab in the middle. I usually do this by tucking one piece of binding under the other. You can see me doing it a few times. It does take practice, so don't be hard on yourself. Once you have pinned your binding and gotten all the way to the end, you are going to trim the excess of your binding off. Make sure that you leave a couple of inches overlapping with from the beginning. Because I chose to use a satin binding, I was getting a little bit of fraying where I trimmed the binding. This is pretty common with satin to have it fray. So I just went ahead and melted the edges. Please get help if you have never done this before or if you are not an adult. Make sure that you have someone there helping you, making sure that you're doing it safely and without burning your fabric. Make sure the end of your binding has been folded at that diagonal just like you did in the beginning. That again will make it lay really nice and flat. Go ahead and finish that corner off and you can start sewing the binding on. Go ahead and sew along the edge of your binding all the way around. I used a zigzag stitch. I thought that would make it look the best and also help it be really tight and secure. Uh. Uh. <laughs> uh. I ran out of bobbin thread at like the worst possible time. <laughs> Once you go all the way around, you are going to want to do something similar along all of the martyred corners and along that diagonal where we started and stopped our binding. So listen guys, I just looked at the receipt and realized that I spent a total of $12.13 on the fabric and the binding. How great is that? When you do these steps, make sure that your mitered corners have a sharp point and make sure that your diagonal isn't going to slip around like mine did. <laughs> it did not turn out well the first time, so I ended up picking it out and redoing it and I made sure to put a pin in it so that it wouldn't happen again. All right guys, this is the finished product. I am so happy with how it turned out. I actually think the yellow and the pink look so cute together. 
It was definitely a happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun making this. I hope you had fun watching this video and I really hope it inspires you to make your own version. Comment down below if you do end up making it or have any questions for me and subscribe so you can see more in the future.